and welcome. I am Aruna Thakur and I am Subina Roy and you are watching our special show Women and Judicial System on Rajya Sabha TV. In this show, we bring to you active role played by the judiciary to protect women from exploitation. To discuss the issue, we have with us Justice Manju Goel, former judge of Delhi High Court, Geeta Lutra, senior advocate, and Madhavi Divan, advocate. First question is to Justice Manju: That how you experience that how the judiciary approach towards gender laws? Uh, it's very important to know that although judges don't actually make laws. They make great deal of contribution in all fields of law, and it is not an exception when it comes to law regarding women, which we say sometimes we call judge-made law. And whatever direction or advice is given by the Supreme Court is followed by all the courts in India. Mm -hmm. And therefore, in today's program, I would like to mention some of the Supreme Court judgments, if you give me a little time. Mm -hmm. You see, right from the time of Bhagwara Bhogin Bhai, that's a very famous judgment mm -hmm. in which the Supreme Court said that no woman of self-respect mm -hmm. will come and depose falsely about her rape because it affects her own dignity mm -hmm. and her own honor in the society. Mm -hmm. And the Supreme Court said, you don't have to look for corroborative evidence. Mm -hmm. So on the simple lone testimony of the rape victim, you can convict an accused. Mm -hmm. So these are two very major uh, steps ahead when it comes to, because rape is the subject of the day, so I am mm -hmm. you know, prompted to speak about rape. Mm -hmm. But there are other matters in which uh, the Supreme Court has come to the aid of women to bring about equality, to bring about justice. For example, in, uh, in when it came to Equal Remuneration Act, the, the court the found... Shaka guidelines. No, no, this is about equal remuneration, yeah, not Visaka guidelines. It's about equal remuneration to men and women doing the same work. Mm -hmm. In a case where women stenographers and male stenographers were given two different designations. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, McIntyre. What, what is, is that your view on this, ma'am? Um, yes, I think the judiciary has really done a lot. Uh, like you were just talking about the Vishaka judgment. Mm -hmm. Now the Vishaka judgment, even though I think it's 1995-1996 uh, mm -hmm. and everyone's been crying for a bill, mm -hmm. the actual um, bill mm -hmm. saying that sexual harassment of women in the workplace has just been introduced mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's still to be mm -hmm. enacted. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the important things it's done is it's even included domestic workers. Mm -hmm. There is a backlash there is a possibility of abuse. Mm -hmm. In fact, there was a section in it which said that if it is wrongly used, then the person should be punishable. Mm -hmm. Now that women's groups have insisted should be deleted. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, feel that while there are some 43 legislations dealing with women, 22 dealing with domestic, really marriage and divorce laws, mm -hmm. you, and one new enactment coming, almost one or two new enactments coming mm -hmm. every session of parliament, mm -hmm. every session of parliament. Mm -hmm. For example, you've got registration of marriages act mm -hmm. coming. But the judiciary has done its own bit. You have, of course, you have, for example, a Vishaka. You have the Sarla Mudgal judgment where Supreme Court said uniform civil code, mm -hmm. which has not been implemented. Mm -hmm. You saw Supreme Court come in where uh, there was this position that 125 CRPC mm -hmm. will not apply to women mm -hmm. as a result of uh, the enactment mm -hmm. which came after no, Shaban. So Tell us that there are uh, women-specific laws, there are women-related laws. Then what will be your perception that how the judiciary play the pr proactive role now in this? Well, I think one important development is that we are having, we're getting more women judges at every level. For the first time, we have two in the Supreme Court. And I mean, there are many in the high courts, many in the lower levels. And I think that uh, uh, definitely is going to bring about a positive change, not only because those women judges will look at the cases in a perhaps more sensitive fashion, 
but also because they will have the effect of sensitizing their brother judges on the same bench. So I think, you know, this is something which, um, uh, you know, when you have a, a, a woman judge sitting next to you, you will be forced to think differently. Just as, for example, if you have a, you know, a, a member of the scheduled caste sitting next to you as a, a, a judge, then you will perhaps be more sensitive to, to certain issues and problems before you. And this is not just in India, you know, in, in, in uh, the United Kingdom, where uh, in their Supreme Court, they have a lone woman judge, Baroness Hale. I mean, she also has spoken about this, that, you know, the impact that she has as a woman judge sitting on the bench. So I think that is, is, is one All important All right, thing. we have talked about uh, women judges, but have we really implemented this at the practical level? You know, see, ultimately, you know, whether uh, every, every participant in the criminal justice system, whether he be the accused or, uh, you know, the police, the judge, the victim, everybody is eventually a product of society. And, uh, you know, just as, you know, we've spoken a lot about uh, after this horrific rape case, about, you know, how systems have to change, how it has to become more uh, um, uh, gender sensitive, the police in dealing with it or judges in dealing with it. But ultimately, you know, everybody's a product. By the time you are a judge or by the time you are, uh, you know, enter the police service, you're already a thinking adult. Your attitudes have already so been coming. formed. So I think we need a change at a more, you know, basic fundamental education level that, you know, where, wh why are we not speaking about sensitizing children just as you learn to count or you're taught to read? Why are you not taught gender sensitization at the age of four onwards? Only then will you see a systemic change through, you know, whether it's, it's uh, why are young men taking to this and believing that, you know, they can get away with crimes against women? I mean, I'm bringing uh, Geeta Lutra that uh, she had uh, come up with sensitize, uh, sensitization that what will be your perception? Yes, you need to sensitize the police, you need to sensitize judges, but as she said, the first and foremost is if our education system and our family structure, instead of becoming more loose, actually remains, our family ties remain more strong. I think so there's something inherently wrong with the way we are also dealing with the children, dealing with human beings. And I think this is one of the things which Mahatma Gandhi say, said. Um, he says that, you know, you have to treat as jails, as hospitals, because you're really talking of mentally sick people. So what is the reason of crime? And what is the purpose of punishment? Is it reform? Is it retributive? Is it deterrent? So one of the important things is, of course, you want to deter, but you also want to reform. Mm -hmm. so, one of, uh, so while we look at sensitizing, we have to sensitize the whole society instead of giving uh, some kind of lip service. One very interesting example, they said to sensitize judges, they asked them that, how was your first night with your spouse? And every judge was aghast. They said, how can you be asking us this question? You, I mean, this is completely invading my privacy. They said a pleasant mm -hmm. experience is something which you can't repeat to your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Then the unpleasant experience of the woman has to be put in into an atmosphere mm -hmm. which is at least a conducive or a for child who's been a victim, has to be put in an atmosphere which has to be a little conducive. So given the fact that we have so many courts and they are so loaded with work, we have to balance the two. So on one hand, we say fast-track courts. On the other hand, we can't say now rule of law should be dispensed with the victim, the accused has no rights. We can't, I mean, both things. The rule of law has to go, the fact that the liberty of a person who may be wrongly accused mm -hmm. has to be protected at the same time mm -hmm. as we are protecting the victim. Mm -hmm. And when we balance them and make sure mm -hmm. that the trial is fair, just, that's what we stand for mm -hmm. in the democracy, in an Indian democracy. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's what we have to give importance while we have to give importance mm -hmm. to sensitivity, mm -hmm. both of the police as well as of the judges. We'll be back after a short break. Welcome back. Rape laws in India have encompassed varied forms of sexual offences and now are we ready for a gender neutral law? We already have a pending bill in the criminal amendment bill. So ma'am, are we ready for a gender neutral law since the bill talks about, you know, sexual assault instead of rape? See, sexual assault instead of rape, I think that's a good idea because rape, the definition is very narrow. In sexual assault, you'll include 
insertion of objects, insertion of finger, ins oral sex, all that comes in sexual assault. But you mm -hmm. can't tar it with the same brush. Mm -hmm. So obviously the punishments should be graded. Mm -hmm. Then the second aspect which the bill, I think, which is really laudatory is, mm -hmm. it brings in 326A mm -hmm. to 326B, mm -hmm. which says acid attacks, which mm -hmm. were missing. Mm -hmm. Then you take the Guwahati incident where the woman was disrobed. Mm -hmm. You really had only outraging the modesty. So it's amending that mm -hmm. and it's saying that, yes, uh, any kind of sexual stalking mm -hmm. or following a woman mm -hmm. or giving her calls mm -hmm. or obscene mes messages, mm -hmm. etc., all that also becomes now an mm. offense. Mm. So there are lots of good aspects. Mm. So sexual assault question. is something which mm. I think is, a, uh, is mm. very good. I I'm mean, the definition. To the investigation process, ma'am. Ma'am, I would like to ask you when a woman goes to the court, what kind of problems that she faces? As a litigant or as a, uh, a lawyer, I mean... As are... a litigant, ma'am, as a litigant. Well, I think, you know, there are so many laws now that women are using very effectively, some, some of them perhaps too effectively, like you have 498A, which has been used in a big way. Uh, it's been abused in a big way. Um, you have the Domestic Violence Act. So women are actively using uh, laws available to them. Uh, but of course, you know, when it comes to rape and, uh, you know, uh, uh, it, it's, a very, it's a very difficult process, you know, re reporting something like that. Now, let me give you an example of, for example, uh, the Vishaka guidelines. Mm -hmm. A judgment came in 1997. Now, I think 13 years have gone by. Uh, even the Supreme Court of India doesn't have a redressal committee yet. I mean, there is still this campaign happening. And that is irony mm. of ironies. Mm. That, you know, here you're required in every workplace, mm. every office to Ma have that. Come. It makes it so difficult then. Mm. Ma'am, all right. We have all Supreme Court guidelines, ma'am. And now, you know, the Delhi police has implemented all this law. Like we have come up with the Rape Crisis Intervention Center. And also we have Rape Crisis Cell, where women lawyers will assist the victims. So what what do you have to uh, talk about this, ma'am? See, there are two, three important things in this investigation. One was this, there was this two-finger test. And then there was this position under the Evidence Act, which was an old archaic principle, that if uh, the sexual history of the victim was important, and then the two-finger test to determine whether she was used to sexual intercourse or not. Now. The amendments in the Evidence Act have taken away both these and the uh, 2010 judgment of the Supreme Court has said you can't mm. be going by the two-finger test. Mm. Unfortunately, the, the courts are still going by that. The doctors are still going by that. So these guidelines and the explanation to the doctors is not sufficient. I think what we need to do is have guidelines to the doctors. This is what we want. We do not want the sexual history of the parent, patient or the victim. We do not want to have you do the two-finger test. It's abolished even in Pakistan. I'm not saying even in Pakistan in any other way, but the fact is it's been abolished all over the world. India doesn't recognize it, but despite that, apparently there have been some 180 or judgments in the last year or so. And Several of them have still gone by, by all this. Mm -hmm. So despite the fact that the courts and the law, the courts have ruled on it, there is amendment in the law. Despite that, this is the problem. I bring in uh, Justice Manju, that where you put the present uh, status of women, are we really empowered? I think we have covered a lot of space, but there's a, the, the journey is very, very long ahead. Journey is very, very long ahead. We, uh, we can't be complacent saying that we have achieved so much. There is so much, so much more to do. So I'm not complacent that we have done enough. Ma'am, what about uh, ma uh, your opinion, ma'am? Madhvi? Well, I think, you know, we're a society of a lot of contradictions. I mean, there are women in, in so many important places today, politically, uh, socially, in, in, you know, uh, uh, they're all over the place. And yet, you know, in, a, in the capital city, women have been found to be so unsafe. So we are really a society of huge contradictions, and there's a lot of gap, which is, of course, yet to be bridged. It's very bad. We don't even have central forensic laboratories. I was reading yesterday, and so that's why it comes immediately to my mind. They said there are 10 tests which can be 
10 CFSL tests or facilities are only for 10 tests every month or something. You can't have something like that. We don't even have facilities. We, of course, our laws are completely lacking. I think we, maybe we should, I, 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 one of the greatest examples is Rwanda. And it means a, maybe a small state, but you have 51% parliamentarians there. You have a great number of women in the judiciary. You have very gender sensitive laws. You are implementing it and bringing about real equality. In India, we have 11% parliamentarians and we have, as she said, two lone judges in the Supreme Court. I mean, this is just a tip of the iceberg. What as ma'am, as Justice Goyal and one, has said. One last question to all of you, ma'am. Ma'am, we have a number of rape laws, but how do we sensitize our Indian women about these laws? Solutions, ma'am. Ma'am, first you. Well, we have to uh, disseminate the information, tell people what the law is, tell people how to go about it. And we also need support services, which is not enough at the moment. And you have to guard against abuse. Mm -hmm. It should not go the 498A406 way, mm -hmm. where people today are groaning. You can't break your family systems. While you need protection for women, mm -hmm. you also need protection for people who are being wrongly accused. Mm -hmm. So our laws have to be well thought out and have to be balanced. And you, I think we need to bring in that, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, in schools at a very, very young age, just as, you know, you have math, you have science, you're teaching all these subjects, gender equality, gender we sensitization. Gender. Because the moment yeah. you teach even a four-year-old mm -hmm. that, you know, you need to conduct yourself in a particular way when it comes to the opposite sex, mm -hmm. then perhaps that child will go home and tell his father that you cannot raise your hand on, on my mother. That's not the way to go. And therefore, you know, that will gradually, I think we don't prioritize gender equality and, and, you know, the attitudes as much as we perhaps. That's all for the discussion that we have. Thank you for watching our special show, Women and Judicial System. Keep watching Rajasabha TV.